Oh, hey, folks, how you doing? It's Paul. I uh, figured I loaded a video, and it's taking forever for whatever the reason. It's a 32-minute video, so I don't know if it's up there or not. Probably will be in the next hour. But um, what happened is um, I was throwing my disc this morning, and I was having a great time, and I actually uh, sanded down a couple of the discs that were, um, you know, needed it a little bit, and they were all looking good. And um, I thought that I had a mamba. Uh, I, I kind of thought that I had a Shrike as well, but I wasn't quite sure. Nonetheless, I had 11 discs. And um, uh, after I got out of work, I kind of had my second wind. You know what I mean? I, I kind of tried to nap a little bit, and then I got up, and you just feel like extra shitty. So I got up, and I kind of you know shook off the cobwebs, and I went out, and I forced myself to go out and throw some some golf discs. So... Um, I couldn't get anything really accomplished. I didn't get any street shots over that fence. Um, I don't know what to say about it. It was just not happening. But I did all right. I mean, I was throwing the discs. And, um, you know, life was happening. And um, what happens when you work the third shift is, I'm not sure lethargic is the right word, but it may be, it may apply. But... You you hit this wall, and when you get tired, it's like your body knows you haven't slept all night, or if you've taken a couple of Z's, it's different. You know, it's just a little sleep snack or something like that, and it's not the same thing. And your body tells you uh, about it, and you just feel like passing out. And um, uh, oftentimes, that's what happens. I mean, your body just has to have a certain amount of unconscious sleep because what you get here is like if I try to nap in the car I go into a form of lucent dreaming uh, which is like it's not quite like deep sleep your mind is still engaged you're, you're still getting rest but I'm not sure it's quite as good but it's probably pretty close because I've you know laid down like that and I've woke up and I remember I'm dreaming about something or another so it means you're out but you know what I'm saying? It's just better to kind of wake up after about an hour and say, hey, you know, I just knocked out. That's always better for you, you know. But anyways, I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm going to give you an update on everything that's happening. And I, I kind of did this in my last video, but it was 35 minutes long or 32 minutes. It's having trouble loading up. So I think it'll be loaded by the time you see this one. Um, sadly, I lost all my discs today. Now, I had 11. And um, I, I won't go into what they are. They were a variety of discs. And um, uh, what happened was I, you know, I had my second win there after taking about a 40-minute nap. And then I just got tired. And then I had to go back to the car. And um, you see, I, I told you that Billy, my friend, he used to have a self-mutilating problem. And I kind of got into a phase of that myself. And... Uh, you just get mad at yourself and you think that, you know, you should be able to handle it. And um, Billy was so abused and the people made fun of him so badly that, uh, you know, he he um, he hated himself and he hated the way he looked and all of that. And I explained that in the video about my friend Billy. And he was a good man. He was a good man. He was ugly as sin, uh, but he was a good man. And um, I, it was a privilege to, you know, to help him a little bit. That's what I did. I, I, I hung around with him, and uh, he used to come over the house every day. Once he found out where I lived, he just came over every single day. Came over, drove up the driveway, went into the backyard, just parked the scooter, and proceeded to tell me, you know, the same three or four stories that he had memorized. You know, Billy was a funny guy, though. He was, he was a good guy. Um, so um, uh, what happened was I just... Uh, you know, I had to knock out. And what worried me is that I've got experience, folks, and it's not really good to park on that little access street. It's a real street, but it's very narrow. And um, anything happens, you're at fault parking there. Now, number two, that's not likely. But and it's not likely that a cop would come over. Typically, they don't. It's, there's almost no police presence here at all. So the, the, the problem I have with it, though, is that there are people that don't like me there. So I just thought it would be best for me to take a break, 
and and go into where I work over there, just into the parking lot over there, and that's reasonably safe. They're not going to send out a tow truck for you over there. They might ask you what you're doing over there, and I would tell them I'm the guard, and I'm, I'm just trying to, kind of taking a cat nap. I'll be out of here in a few minutes. But it, you wouldn't get anything further than that. So in my speaking uh, on my defense here, um, I was afraid because if you park over there, uh, I've had a tow truck come over and just – you don't even hear them and they come right over and they take you. So isn't the kind of thing that, um, I would want to, um, you know, get involved in. So, um, you know, at this particular point or any point. So what I figured I would do is I would take my car and move it up and just go about a football field up into the complex there that I work at. And that's exactly what I did. And I was so groggy that I was just looking to make it to that place so I could kind of like relax and just knock out. What I forgot is that, like if you look at my videos, you'll see it, the fences are only this big and at the top they're round but they're flat. So I can set the discs on there and I set my 11 discs on there and I forgot them. And uh, I was off there, uh, you know, catching some Z's and one of these fucking cocksuckers here at this place decided to fucking take my disc. It's an embarrassment. They're all fucking drug addicts here. They're all fucking drug addict mechanics and shit. Fucking, they work on the boats. And then they've got fucking boat owners or fucking another story, which I won't get into. Uh, but they're multimillionaires and they're, you know, these little taking care of babies. They don't pay any rent. They, they've got good food and this and that and the other things. So, I mean, it, it, these are fucking shitheads. They stole my microwave oven and now they stole 11 of my discs. So... Uh, you know, they knew it was me. I was, you know, I go there all the time. Anybody that's been there, they know who it is. But they're shitheads. So as a result, you got to watch yourself three ways to Sunday here. They're fucking terrible here. And I mean it. I know. I've worked here since, like, the end of November, I think. And uh, I've gotten a real lesson in um, high society, I will tell you that, literally. Literally and figuratively um, in two different ways, I might tell you. Uh, so, I, you know, the discs were gone and I said to myself, well, that's it. And, um, like that's that, you know, you're out 50 bucks, you know, some of them were a little bit more, some of them were $8 discs. But, um, anyways, what happened was, um, I spent the day napping and I went over to the, the grocery store and, um, I was lucky. I was able to take, I was able to take, um, the ice cream that I got yesterday yesterday the ice cream which was like a half gallon of briar's ice cream and uh you know it kind of melted down i was going to use it in coffee or something but it, i had eaten about half of it i guess you know and it really wasn't much use for anything but i had my receipt and i took it back early in the morning and generally speaking you may pull that off so i took in seven dollars and i considered that as part of the you know healing money from that you know loss over there uh, of my discs so I did that, and then um, uh, what happened was uh, this afternoon, I went and I got a chicken, and uh, the chicken, I don't know, it, it went through me, or the, um, I forget the name of that, uh, Duke's, Duke's uh, horseradish white Alabama sauce, I don't know, it went right through me. It went right through me and gave me the shit, so um, I didn't really want to do it, but I did it anyway, and I took it back. And uh, there was a black girl behind the counter, and she just had enough of me. So uh, she called the supervisor. The supervisor came over, and I told him it's the truth. It, it's kind of went through me, and I don't know if it's the sauce or if it's the chicken, but better I just leave both. So I wound up getting the credit for that. So I probably wound up getting about $15, $16 back, um, which kind of helped soften the blow a little bit. And believe it or not, um, there was a very nice black woman in there. And it was a cashier. She was so nice to me. And um, uh, I said, I think I'm about 10 cents short. I said, oh, I'm going to have to break like a $20 bill. And she goes, don't worry, I'll cover it for you. And, um, you know, she said, like, do you have money for that? And I said, no, I'll have to leave it. She said, she bought that for me, too. Because some people are really nice. You know, they're they're really nice. And um, I could use it. I mean, frankly, I could use it. So I hate to say that, but I'm not rolling in wealth. So, um that was really nice of her. And then she came over because I, I went back out and I was kind of looking for some barbecue sauce uh, for the chicken. 
And she came over and she handed me a whole bunch of change, like a couple of dollars worth of change. She was really nice to me. It's an older black woman. She's nice. Uh, very, very good person. You can understand what I'm saying. So, um, unfortunately, I got sick from it. I came back and I gave it back. So, I kind of, you know, my road is burned there. There's no more road back to perdition or whatever they call that. Uh, I just couldn't, can't go in there anymore, you know, because I kind of pushed it. But I was able to kind of take off some of the blow here from losing these discs. And uh, what happened was, um, since I bought so many discs, I had uh, about 28,000 points or something like that, 28,000 points uh, from buying so many discs. And I got a $28 credit, a $27 credit. So what I did was I bought some discs and I'll show you. And then I, I, I know exactly how to get there. So I won't, um, I won't bore you here with this. Um, I'll just show you the discs I got. And I made sure that I didn't buy any discs that were higher than six dollars, because you know I figure like it was it was my fuck up, you know what I mean? But to be honest with you, like I told you, um, this is in the act of trying to, um, you know, trying to trying to make money, trying to survive, you know. So here's the order. I just got it today. It's the 23rd of April. And here it is, and I will show you what I've got, okay? And I'll show you what it cost me. Because now is the time to use my bonus points. Okay, here's what I got. I'm pressing the order right now, so it's going to pop up. Okay, I got a Wraith. Now, for those of you who throw golf discs, the Wraith is not as fast. I think it's like an 11 or a 10 or 11, something like that. Or maybe it's a 12. I don't know. I think it's slower than that. But the Wraith is... Um, is a slower disc than let's say a Shrike, but it's a good uh, it's a good good disc nonetheless. So I bought one, and as you can see, it's six dollars. Um, the Sidewinder was what I thought I bought my son because they had that was the only disc I could find that they had it in 100 grams, 219. But I was wrong about that. I those were uh, Thunderbirds or something. They were something else. So I didn't know that. I wasn't really paying attention because I don't deal with these discs. I, I want the fast, high-speed discs. So um, I got two of these Sidewinders uh, in uh, 156 to 159 gram. And uh, these were also $6. Uh, so I got three of them now. And then the Boss, like I told you, the Boss is kind of like an all-around wonderful disc. And it will do what you need it to do. Um, is it forgiving? Probably not. Um, do you have to get it on the money? Yeah, you kind of have to get it on the money. They don't forgive. But they're a good disc. If you get it right, they really go. They hold. The, they held uh, for years the uh, world's record for flying discs, 1,108 feet. I don't, I don't think it still stands. Um, so as a result... These are terrific discs, and for six dollars, uh, you just—it's just like I told you, like with an ace in, in rummy. If somebody discards an ace, you pick it up because you just do it on general principle, even if you don't need it. So I got two bosses, 150 to 155 class, and I got two boss in the 156 to 159 because I'm handling the 153 to 155. I'm handling it. It seems like I'm doing pretty well with those. I don't always get good throws. They'll tend to go off to the right pretty quickly. And they'll tend to go off to the left if you don't get the right hyzer line. If you if, Like, it's harder for them to come up and over, it seems like to me. So, anyway, so I've got the bosses covered. And then I did buy one Mamba uh, because I thought I lost the Mamba today. But what I was going to tell you is that I looked under my seat. And I found three discs, and they weren't any of the 11. They all got taken. But I had the Mamba 172, which just came in. And, um, you know, that was a new disc. And then I had a, uh, oh, that Shrike, that that beautiful purple Shrike that I showed you on my couple videos ago. And it's a 169 or 168, 168. Perfect weight. And, folks, I'm in love. And I will tell you about it. Uh, but I'll do it. 
after I get through with this because um, you got to know what's what with Innova discs because they are hard to get used to. A lot of people quit, I think, if they try to play the Innova game. I, I believe that because I think like those like uh, Dynamic Discs and Latitude and all those other companies, I, uh, you know, 64 or whatever that company is, I, I, I think they, you know, their discs are probably better. I, I'm just being honest with you. And I don't like to say that because I, I love Innova. Um, they helped me this time too, um, like with knowing, but like kind of not knowing my situation because they give you points and you're able to buy $5 discs, which is, you know, makes you able to get out and play the game and get into it. You know what I mean? And not just having like two or three discs, but you go out and you spend $45 and you get eight discs. I mean, why not? Right. Eight, nine discs. And then they give you a free one on Friday. If you only, you only have to buy three and their shipping is very reasonable. It's only $6 for virtually any size order. But in fact, any order, because once you get over $75, it's uh, it's uh, free shipping. So I've got nothing to say but good things about Innova. Every company is going to have their shady discs. Let's face it, okay? It's just the nature of the game. And some people won't find them shady. Some people are going to like that style of, of, um, of characteristic about the disc. You know, who knows? So anyways... The last one I got besides the Mamba. So now I know I at least I got two of those Mambas because I know I got one in the car. I had that 168 Shrike and I have that little blue disc, which is like an approach disc, a putter approach disc, which I aired out about an hour ago. I threw that motherfucker 245, 250 feet. That's really saying something because that is anything but a uh, air worthy disc. I mean, I... It hurt my shoulder, uh, arm, uh, throwing me because I. You have to Anheuser those because they'll just. You got to get an Anheuser on them because you got to get them to come back in order to get distance, and you kind of have to go high up in the air, which means you got to get it right for them to sail. And all these pro people know what I mean. Uh, they put these discs up fucking 120 feet in the air. I ain't shitting you. When you were watching. All those good throws, like on YouTube, where they, they show these guys going around the horn, like they show them and then the discs start going 90 degrees. Folks, those discs are higher than 100 feet in the air. I mean, I I was getting them 85 feet in the air myself yesterday, and I wound up getting my, my damn disc caught, which didn't make any difference because I lost it. I lost that boss, the 155, the orange one. Got caught up there, and it took me... 300 throws of a rock and I had to use big rocks not little ones because that thing was wedged in there pretty good I hit it twice and it still didn't come out it's a pain in the ass because it was up about 55 feet and well, maybe 45 to 50 feet and that's not like getting it stuck at 28 to 30 feet 28 to 30 feet you still got something on it when it hits but at 50 feet you're, it's already slowing down when you throw it like that so I had to use a heavy disc and like I told you, I hit twice, and I still couldn't get that bastard down. So the last two discs I got here were apes. Um, again, they're $6. I can't say no. I can't. And I can't afford to buy these. Um, the ape, I really like the ape. I've got a soft spot in my heart for the ape. Um, is it a perfect disc? Not really. Uh, is it as good as the um, Corvette? I don't know. But you can still get off some really good throws with that uh, ape. And you just, you got to get it right. And, you know, it, th those are made for people with huge arms, huge arms, okay, and a lot of skill. So, but I like them, and they're only $6 each, so I banged them out. So, like I